Guys, we gotta sit down and talk. If this is what you're using to sharpen your hunting knives, you're doing it wrong. Um, don't we make something like that? Oh, yeah, <laughs> that is ours. Uh, so here's the deal with carbide pull-through knife sharpeners. They're super easy to use. You've got a, two carbides that crisscross, you set the knife and you pull it through. Here's the problem. You get any sort of damage or chip in your blade and you're going to hang up on that and make that chip even bigger. It's just shearing material off the side. It doesn't create a great edge. It doesn't hold up real long. It leaves kind of a burr on there uh, and it can be destructive to the knife over time. So they work in a pinch and if you're a beginner and using non-expensive non knives, just kind of entry level knives, softer steels, they get the job done. But I really don't like them. Really wish we didn't sell so many of them actually, but it's a form factor that's so easy that I think people keep coming back to it. Yeah, man, it's one of those like, if it's it's super simple, I've got an animal on the ground, I need to get my knife sharp again, it's getting dark, swipe, 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 yep. workable edge, but what you're doing to your knife is rough. It's rough. So we've got a couple of knife sharpeners that are the right way to sharpen, and they're really not much bigger. And so we'll show you those, but first we're gonna go over a couple of our favorite hunting knives and how to sharpen them so that you get the most out of your hunting knife when you're in the field. All right, so we've got a few hunting fixed blades sitting here on the table, and I'm gonna have Josh go over some of the nuances with them because while they may look pretty similar, there's differences between each. The first two we've got over here are probably two of the more popular knives on the market right now. You've got the Benchmade Steep Country. Josh, tell us a little about the Steep Country and what makes it so popular. Yeah, I think people love the like traditional hunting shape of the belly. Um, you've got a no frills, but really grippy handle and some good jimping on the spine. So you can have a variety of handle positions or, or holding positions on the handle to work with. Um, I think people love it for that. Premium steel, Benchmade, good brand. Um, it's a nice knife of overall. Mm -hmm. Next one over here, we've got the MKC Speed Go, another really popular model. Mm -hmm. Pretty different compared to the Steep Country. What's, what, tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, this is, uh, I mean, I said this is no frills, but I think this is even more so. So it's just getting lighter weight. Um, that handle is, is thinned out and then wrapped in paracord. So real light and then useful if you need that paracord for something. Uh, specifically in a field dressing situation. Maybe you're tying up a, a leg, keep it out of the way or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but super thin, super slicey, a bit more pointy. Almost got some flex to it almost. It does, too, like... it does have a little bit of flex out at the tip. Um, the pointy helps in some situations and some guys don't like it as much uh, because of the, yeah, because they're more likely to, to stab into meat. Mm. And so when you have something with more of a belly and you can keep your finger out there, it almost protects you uh. from stabbing in. Uh, but at the same time, you can get in and do some really detailed work, especially around like ball joints uh, and trimming out, uh, yeah, sep separating big joints or uh, getting uh, little mini tendons that okay. can be buried way down deep inside of the, the muscle. Okay. Next up, we've got one that I was surprised to see on the table. Looks more like a bushcrafting knife to me, but it's got some versatility, it sounds like, too. Josh, tell us about this one here. The, how do you say it? Yeah, the Falkneven F1. Falkneven. Uh, it is a bushcraft knife, and I think the more I the more I hold it, the more I think about it, the more it can be used as a hunting knife. So it's got a full convex grind, and that's what makes it uh, such a favorite with bushcrafters. It's got a really strong edge. A lot of metal is still out near the edge. Thick at the spine too compared yeah. to the others. So it's thick at the spine. It's also thick right behind the edge, which just means you can baton through wood or clear brush or like whatever you're doing around camp. Um, and I think that's probably why it made it up here as a favorite is the guy who, who uses this uh, is spending you know, several days chasing elk and he's camping in a bivy mm -hmm. while he's doing that. And so this is the knife he's relying on to do all of that and to be able to process game. So it does that. You can see it's got a hybrid blade shape kind of between that Benchmade and that Montana Knife Company knife. I, it's a good choice, real versatile, real grippy, nice handle. Um, it just... I think it's an awesome knife overall, and if you want to carry it, then I think it's worthwhile. Cool. All right, the last one we got here uh, from Buck. Uh, this is, I assume, a more budget-friendly pick here. Tell us a little bit about this one. I think this is your choice, right? Yeah, yeah, this is something I hunt with. Um, this is the Buck Light. Uh, I think it's a small version. There's a big and a small. I like the small. Um, one of the things I love about it is the price. Hard to overstep that. I think it's $33 or oh. something like that. Obviously, prices may go up or down, but... Um, it's a 440 steel. You can see it's not so far off of the of the general shape, but it's got a 
yeah, it's, it's actually more different than I, than I thought as I hold it up there, but you still got a belly. Uh, you still got some jimping. Uh, this handle is real grippy. It thins out right there. So mm -hmm. you can do this, this kind of pinch grip. Uh, you can, you can crawl up on the, on the spine of the knife and do good work. Um, good finger positions here. So I'm locked in and, and confident as I use that knife. And I just don't have a lot of stress about beating it up. Um, the steel is uh, that 440C, so mm -hmm. able to be sharpened in the field. May not hold an edge as long as some of the more premium steels will. And uh, if you carry a sharpener, it makes carrying a knife that has a, a slightly lower grade steel not an issue because easy to sharpen in field. Okay. All right, Josh, so we've got similar knives here, but there are some differences. What are the things people need to concentrate on when they head out into the field when it comes to each of these knives? Yeah, there's there's three key things to keep in mind. One is the shape of the blade. So in general, that that belly versus more of a, a pointed edge uh, or somewhere in between. Uh, that's really going to come into play when you're sharpening towards the tip. I'll get into that in a little bit. The next is the the blade steel. So if mm -hmm. it's a more premium steel or a harder steel, um, it's probably going to respond slower to sharpening. It's probably going to hold an edge longer, but then take a little bit more effort to restore that edge when you're in the field. Again, a little more in detail when we get into actually sharpening. And then the last thing is the edge angle. Uh, sometimes your knife company, the knife company will tell you the edge angle. Uh, we've learned in our experience that that's more or less accurate. So uh, something that I would choose is to match the angle of your sharpener at home to the sharpener that you're taking into the field. Mm -hmm. Uh, and there may be some manual adjustment that you have to do, not a big deal. Um, but a thinner knife is usually going to have a lower angle, maybe something like 17 degrees, and a thicker knife is going to have a wider angle, like 20 or 25 degrees. That's typically gonna be your range in the hunting knife space is anywhere from 17 to 25 degrees. So the key thing to keep in mind with blade shape is usually around the tip. Um, you wanna make sure that when you're sharpening at home, you sharpen all the way from the heel of the knife to the tip. So when you're on a powered system, that means you're going to be lifting your hand all the way up to get to the full tip, making sure that the abrasive or the belt is perpendicular to the tip. So mm -hmm. coming in at a, at a 90 degree angle. And then make sure you stop with the tip of the knife in the middle of that belt. That'll prevent any rounding and keep that tip super sharp. Same thing's true on our blade grinding attachment. You come around and make sure that tip becomes perpendicular to the belt, stopping in the middle and then lift off. Uh, the other piece of blade shape that's important is if there's any recurve, none of these knives have a recurve, but if there's a recurve back in the belly of the knife, um, you're going to need to get inside of that to sharpen and a flat diamond is going to be a challenging way to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, sharpening at home with a belt system, uh, the belt will follow the curve of that blade and will we'll do a great job of sharpening inside of that. Uh, but if you're sharpening in the field, you'll need to choose something like a round ceramic to get inside of that belly. When you're sharpening the tip in the field, it's important to make sure the same thing is true. As you come across that diamond or, or ceramic abrasive, that you lift your elbow until that tip becomes perpendicular with the stone or the direction that you're traveling on the stone. Uh, that ensures that you'll maintain that super sticky and sharp tip. Uh, and that you won't round anything off. Make sure you lift off before the tip crosses over the edge of the stone. You don't want to drag it off the edge. Slowly over time, that will end up rounding the tip. Okay, that's helpful when it comes to the shape. You mentioned angle too. What's, let's talk, talk a little bit about why angle matters and understanding that before you head out into the field. Yeah, so knives like, uh, like these are probably going to be in that 20 degree range. Uh, knives like the MKC is a little bit thinner. It's going to be in that 17 degree range. And then the Falkneven is a thicker knife uh, and thicker down by the blade, probably upwards of 20, maybe 25 degrees. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when you say thinner versus thicker, you're talking about spine thickness, right? Like, yeah, I'm actually talking about the, like the thickness of the, as it gets closer to the edge, okay. but spine thickness is also a good, a good reference point. I mean, you can see clearly, uh, that that Falcon even knife is significantly thicker than that Benchmade and mm -hmm. has a wider angle. Yep. And so when it comes to maintaining that angle in the field, why is it important to know that this is 17 and this one maybe closer to like 25? Yeah. So when you use, uh, when you use like one of those pull through sharpeners, it really doesn't matter. There's no, it's set at whatever angle it's set. Usually like 25 or 28 degrees. Mm -hmm. It's really just like getting you to the tip. Right. Um, that's why people like them because it just, 
rips just, the metal off and you've yeah, got a new edge. Feels like it works right away. Mm -hmm. But when you're using something like one of our field sharpeners uh, that has more of a stone and a, and a by hand sharpening approach, uh, you wanna know the angle to sharpen to mm -hmm. because you're the one holding that angle or you're relying on an angle guide. And in this case, or in all these cases, the sharpeners that we make, they all have an angle guide. Mm -hmm. Most of them are 20 or 25 degrees. Uh, and this MKC sharpener is 17 and, and 20 degrees. So uh, you wanna choose the knife sharpener that aligns to the angle on the knife that you have or the angle that you wanna put on the knife. Mm -hmm. um, that brings me yeah. to another point that comes up a lot, even if you're not a hunter, but just when it comes to honing or maintaining your knives out in the field, is that you want to be able to get to that edge. And so you say, we purpose built these because there's a 20 and a 25 actually on some of the same sharpeners. Why is that? It creates a micro bevel. So when you're sharpening at 20 degrees, maybe you're grinding a little bit of that shoulder. And when you're sharpening at 25 degrees, you're going to come in and immediately you're going to hit the edge of that blade. Just mm -hmm. like, you know, these sharpeners, these pull throughs are going to make it you know, 28 degrees or 30 degrees sometimes right. just to like get right to the tip. It's going to be a little bit more blunt, I guess, but it's, it's going to realign that edge and it's going to have a point to it. So 20 degrees helps to shave off some of the material and then 25 degrees just puts it's you right, right on the, the edge. edge, right at the very end. We only ever put that more obtuse angle on the ceramic and that ceramic really doesn't remove very much material. Mm -hmm. It's more and about so aligning. All it's doing is aligning that edge and if anything, it's just bringing that in, bringing those very tips together. Mm -hmm. um, so it leaves a little bit more material right at the edge instead of thinning it out completely. And a lot of times when you're in the field, if you haven't gotten too dull, you can jump right to that ceramic. And so mm -hmm. that obtuse angle gets you to the edge faster. Is that, yep, right? Exactly. Is that right? Okay. Yep. Yep. Cool. Exactly. So, yeah, we've got, we brought four of our field sharpeners. Um, I love each of them for different reasons. Uh, but Kyle, let's jump through these. What do you, what do you like about each of these or what do they do and which do you choose if you're, if you're headed out? Yeah, I've always been a guided field sharpener guy just because there's, it's a little heavier than the rest of these out on the table. I'll, I'll start there, but there's so much you pack into it. You've got, um, I mean, you could hit a bone and get a chip in your blade and you could have got a coarse enough diamond here to, Get that chip out if you had to um, with that 320 grit you've got 600 as well for just touch-ups um, and then you've got your ceramic and you've got your leather so it's a complete sharpener um, from having to shape all the way to just doing touch-ups that's why i like it um, and it's also got you know areas for storage it's just it works it's yeah. tried and true we've had it forever people love it that's my go-to yep i think a lot of people like it for that i i like it i'll carry it and uh like surprisingly, it's really not that big. A lot of people carry it no matter what. Mm -hmm. It is kind of heavy. So we do have a couple of lighter weight options and that's basically why we have these other options yep. is we've stripped some of the features and the weight off, we get a little smaller. Yep, exactly. Tell us a little bit about, there's a couple of new ones here I'm excited to hear a little bit about in our collab here and our new folding field sharpener. Yeah, yeah, let's uh, let's cover old news first. This All is right. the, the pocket knife sharpener. Uh, it was the original little brother to the guided field sharpener. Diamond, ceramic, angle guides, and that's it. Um, it's it's pretty simple. It also just works. It does mm -hmm. its job. Uh, it's a fan fan favorite for lightweight. Until we came out with some of the new stuff, and I think people are still gonna like this. I still like it, but tried and true. Um, yeah. So we just came out. There's two. They're pretty new. Came out similar time. Uh, we've got our folding field sharpener. Uh, what I love about this is the abrasives are on the inside. Mm -hmm. So when you close it up, nothing is gonna be scratching anything in your pack or pocket or whatever. Um, it does have a pocket clip. Pocketable. So yep. Fits nicely in a pocket uh, or in, in molly strapping or in a backpack or in a, like if you wanna carry it on your bino harness, wherever, uh, it's, a, it's got a lot to offer as far as portability and where mm -hmm. it can go. Uh, again, 20 and 25 degree edge angles. Uh, you've got your diamond and ceramic, real easy to use. Uh, yeah, kind of been a long time coming since we had our own version of that. Yep. Uh, and lastly is the WorkSharp and I'll show the MKC side. Uh, WorkSharp and MKC knife sharpener. Uh, you can see the similarity to something like our field sharpener. The biggest difference is the edge angle, 17 degree on the diamond, which is thinner for their thinner style knives. Mm -hmm. And then we've got the 20 degree on the ceramic, which allows for that fine micro bevel. Mm -hmm. uh, thinned out, lightweight, broadhead wrench, spot for a lanyard, uh, hunter orange, it's a cool deal. Yep, 
All right, so we shame the people that are using these when they showed up right out of the gate. But truly, this gets the job done if you've got an animal on the ground, but it's messing up your knife, man. Like, so yeah. now we've given them the tools when it comes to being able to maintain your knives properly in the field. So sharpen on a system to a known angle. And then when you're out in the field, you can match that angle, right? Yep, that's the juice of it. Uh, we'll link a video in the description how to sharpen every knife on the Ken Onion Edition Mark mm. II. That's a really big help. It's probably 20 minutes long, so sit down if you got that system, watch it, learn it, especially if you're gonna take a knife that's worth some money and learn how to sharpen it. Mm -hmm. It's worth doing. Um, anything worth doing is worth doing right. So uh, dive into that. We'll link our field sharpeners in the description as well. Uh, great offering. These are all really cost-effective tools to maintain uh, your more expensive and probably cherished tool, things that you might pass down for generations. Yep. Um, we obviously make these, but we recommend each of them for the proper maintenance of your knife. Yep. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, good luck out there this season. See you guys.